We're in a new module, module six, about algebraic expressions. We're going to learn to simplify algebraic expressions in 6.1a. Now, for those of you who are subscribers that have been with me for a while through, like, sixth grade, back in chapter 10 of sixth grade, we learned about algebraic expressions. So this is going to be a real quick review for those of you who need it. The terms of an algebraic expression are separated by a plus or minus sign. That means we have one, two, three terms in this algebraic expression. A variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown quantity, an unknown amount. Algebraic expressions contain at least one variable. A coefficient is a number directly to the left of a variable, which indicates multiplication. If we have 3, that's the coefficient, and p, that's our variable, our letter of the alphabet, taking the place of an unknown amount, it means we have 3 times an unknown amount. Now this part is very important. The plus and minus before each term belongs to that term. So we have 3x raised to the second power. This 3x raised to the second power has an invisible plus sign before it. When it's positive, we don't need to write the plus sign, do we? This plus sign belongs to the term 2x, and this minus sign belongs to the 5. When we simplify expressions using properties, we can combine like terms due to the distributive property. If we have a multiplied to b plus c, we can do a times b plus a times c. And if we have a multiplied to b minus c, we have a times b minus a times c. So if we used actual numbers, and we had 2 times 5 plus 4. Well, we know we can add this, and it would be a 9, and we would do 2 times 9. But we could also do 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 2 times 4, which is 8, and that would give us 18. If there were a minus sign here, there'd be a minus sign between them, we'd have 2 times 5 minus 2 times 4. We'd have 10 minus 8, that would be 2. and if we did find 5 minus 4, that would be a 1. We'd have 2 times 1. That would be 2. So do you see how we can use the distributive property? Bob and Sam get paid per project. Bob is paid a project fee of $30 plus $15 per hour. Sam is paid a project fee of $25 plus $18.50 per hour. Write an expression to represent how much a company will pay to hire both to work the same number of hours on a project. So the first thing we do is write an expression for how much the company will pay each person. And we're going to let H equal the number of hours they'll work. That's going to be our variable. So for Bob, we have $30 plus $15 per hour. That would be $30 plus $15 H. Sam would be $25 plus $18.50 per hour as $25 plus $18.50 H. The second thing we do is add the expressions and simplify by combining the like terms to represent the amount the company will pay to hire both. We combine their pay. We have $30 plus $15 H plus $25 plus $18.50 H. Now we use the associative and commutative properties of addition to rearrange our expression by putting like terms next to each other. We've got 30 plus 25, that's 55, and we have 15 H plus 18.50 H, that makes 33.50 H. Well, the company will pay $55 plus $33.50 per hour to hire both Bob and Sam. $55 plus $33.50 H directly shows the cost to hire both Bob and Sam. And the cost is easier to see than before we combine the like terms. Before, it looked like this. 
Now it looks like this. It's a lot easier to see the cost of hiring both of them. We can use the distributive property to combine the terms with variables. So if you notice, I didn't combine these. I wrote the terms that had variables together in parentheses multiplied to the variable on the outside. If we had 15h plus 18.50h, we could put the 1850 and the 15 inside the parentheses, put the h on the outside, and that means we're going to distribute the h to the 15 and to the 1850. We could just add these and have $33.50 H. Be careful about the sign of each term in the original expression. When adding two terms, the sign of the term with the greatest absolute value will determine the sign of the sum of the two terms. The sign of the term with the greatest absolute value will determine the sign of the sum of the two terms. If we have 2x plus 3 plus 5x minus 8, well, we have 2x and 5x, that makes 7x, and here we have a positive 3 added to a negative 8. Well, the negative 8 has a greater absolute value, and 3 plus negative 8 is equal to negative 5. Do you notice we're not using this plus sign? We're using the sign of the greater absolute value, the negative 8, we have 7x minus 5. We can simplify each expression by combining like terms. Here we have 7a plus 1 half plus 6a minus 3 and a half. We have a 7a and a 6a that makes 13a. Now we have a positive half added to a negative 3 and a half. Well, that's going to give us a negative 3. We take the sign of the greater absolute value. Here we have negative 4 tenths x plus 2, and we're adding it to 1 and 7 tenths x plus 1 and 6 tenths. We have negative 4 tenths x added to 1 and 7 tenths x. That's going to give us a positive 1 and 3 tenths x. We have a positive 2 plus a positive 1 and 6 tenths. That gives us a positive 3 and 6 tenths. Now, stacking the expressions vertically may help us. For this one, if we stacked them vertically, we would do this part, and then we would do this part. That means we have a positive half added to a negative 3 and a half. That gives us a negative 3. And here, we have 7a plus 6a, that's 13a. For this one, we do this side, and then we do this side. And we're adding. We have a positive 2 plus a positive 1 and 6 tenths, that gives us a positive 3 and 6 tenths. Notice that the sign goes with the term. Here we have a negative 4 tenths x plus a positive 1 and 7 tenths x, that's going to give us a positive 1 and 3 tenths x. So if you're having difficulty with these, try stacking them vertically to see if that helps your eyes. Just remember that even though there's a negative sign here, we're adding, okay? Okay, so that was simplifying algebraic expressions and we're finished. We're going to be moving on to 6.1b and we're going to simplify each algebraic expression. Remember that each term of an algebraic expression is separated by a plus or minus sign, and remember that the plus and minus before each term, to the left of each term, belongs to that term. Have a wonderful day. I hope everything is going great for you, and I hope you join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye!